Hi, this is Professor Nugent, and this is the Getting Started video syllabus for Organizational Behavior Winter Session 2016. The purpose of this video is to give you an idea of what to expect in the course, what you'll be working on, and the overall weekly flow of the course. Okay, you should always start in announcements. This is where I'll post critical information about the course on an ongoing basis. It could be feedback, new information, clarifications. It's a very important area. And with all announcements, I also email them to you directly. So make sure that whatever email you have set up with Blackboard is an email that you'll be checking in the winter session. The first announcement I have is just an introductory class overview announcement where I'm posting a link to this video, which you've probably gotten from either stopping by the website for the class on Blackboard or my email I'm going to send out as soon as I complete this. Now, when you get started with this class, the two areas you're going to be working in the most are assignments and discussions. So we're going to, I'm going to be reviewing those in a minute. Uh, also, I'll be using SB Connect, which is an online meeting tool, sort of like Skype, um, for my office hours, which are Monday from 2 to 3 p.m. Now, this class you may have taken an online class with me before, and each of my online classes have sort of a different, slightly different organizational feel. No two classes are identical. And this particular class, I choose to have um, quizzes to represent uh, your, your knowledge of the course material throughout this three week period. And there are gonna be five quizzes that are gonna cover uh, a number of chapters. Each quiz is at least two chapters, maybe three. And the quizzes are short and they count for 10 points. And all the quizzes together are 50% of your grade or 50 points. So they're a pretty important part of the course. And rather than give you a final exam uh, or the midterm, I decided to break that into five smaller quizzes. So the due dates for these are posted right here in announcements because you should write these down or put them in your calendar and have reminders because you, you definitely want to complete them. And the good news is they're, they're all open now, so you can work ahead of time. So if you want to get started in the first quiz, you can go right ahead with that. Okay, But once the due date, uh, it comes up to the due date, the quiz will expire and you will no longer be able to take the quiz. And there's a, you only get one attempt at the quiz, each quiz. All right, so the class schedule, I've broken up the class schedule into three weeks. And I'm displaying the, th the three weeks here. So week one, we're going to cover uh, chapters one through four. And for each chapter, I've also put together a video lecture. So this video lecture is very similar to what you experienced in the classroom with me, uh, except you'll be watching it on, I posted all of the video lectures are being hosted by YouTube for the class. So for week one, I, I have four chapters I want to go over and I've created four lectures. So figure it like this. Each, the winter course is really supposed to be four days a week. If you were to come in person to the winter class, it would be Tuesday through Friday, um, probably f uh, four hours each day, say one to four, one to five p.m. or something like that. So you figure, you know, four hours of class time, four days a week. So, and, and what I would do when I taught this class on campus in person is I'd cover a chapter, a class. So this is week one is the four chapters, the four classes that you would normally would have come to see in person. So that's how I basically designed this class. I said, okay, what would I do if it was an in-person winter course? How much material would I cover? And what would be the pace? And I just took that and applied it to an online environment. So, you know, the amount of time you should be spending on this is figure you should have at least 20 hours a week to be spending on this winter class for three weeks because it's a, you know, it's a 15 week course condensed down to three weeks. So it's not something you're going to be spending two, two to four hours on a week. You're going to be spending about 15 to 20 hours working on this class. Now, uh, week two, we're going to be covering chapters five, six, seven, and eight, uh, which are um, motivation, teamwork performance, um, motivational theory. So it's pretty exciting, interesting week for week two. And again, I have four corresponding lectures to, uh, to this course as well. And then in week three, the, I'll be doing chapters 9, 10, 11, and 15. And I have the four corresponding chapters as well. And every week there'll be discussion questions associated um, that tie into each of the chapters that we're going to be working with. 
Okay, so that's just a class overview. It's, it's a class schedule. We'll be doing 12 chapters, a chapter each, each day that we're supposed to meet uh, that you could actually start early. If you want to start reading the book, you can, you can purchase the book early and you can start watching these lectures and getting a good update and even working on the uh, multiple choice questions. If you have some time over the winter break, feel free to start early and work on this if you like. It's not a requirement though, anyway. Once you have completed a quiz, and the quiz and, and the quiz has closed after the due date you can go back in and view everything you got right or wrong in the quiz and i give you instructions in, in this uh, announcement below the class schedule okay so let's just pop over to documents before we get into assignments and discussions to see what documents i have for you in the document area i i've kept pretty clean and and have just really two areas the powerpoints that are associated with my lectures so if you want to use these for studying or helping with the quizzes or or just following along when i'm doing the lectures all the powerpoints are backed up here and of course the course syllabus which is something that you want to view and read completely um, you may want to open up the course syllabus as i'm doing this on the video because some of the print is kind of small now this is a winter session class and we'll be going for the month, pretty much the month of January, three weeks in January. And I do have office hours every Monday, which are, if you have questions or just want to talk to me, it's a interactive office hours where there's a chat box, there's, there could be video or audio. Uh, you can also feel free to email me at any time you need if you have more private questions that you don't really want the whole class knowing about. And I also have a classroom discussion board that you can post questions about the class in the discussion board as well. Now for this particular course, um, I saw the new edition of the book that just came out and, they, and it's, it's a, I think it was close to $180 for this book, very expensive. So I'm going to try and stick with the, the, um, the 12th edition of the textbook to help reduce costs. And you can get this textbook on, on um, a bunch of different websites, will uh, offer this textbook at a deep discount since it's um, the older edition. So please try to get the 12th edition if you can it will be um, what this class is really going to be, be based around. All right. Now this is an asynchronous course and that, that means that you know you're, you do have deadlines to complete as far as assignments are due. However, you, we don't meet together at the same time. So you are free to work on in a 24 hour period. You pick what is the best time for you to work on this class. Uh, so we're not going to meet in a, in a big uh, Skype-like environment and I'm not going to dispense the lectures live. I'm going to pre-record the lectures so you watch them at your own convenience and I'm going to um, set the assignments up with due dates and you just anytime you want to work on them before the due date you complete it. Now the synchronous part of the class is there is a synchronous part of the class and that's really just office hours and I see something I have to edit here so bear with me while I clean this up. The um, There's a synchronous part of uh, the class and that would be um, SB Connect and on SB Connect I'm going to host my office hours from what do they say here 2 to 3 on Monday on Mondays 2 to 3 which is a uh, voluntary session just like regular office hours and it's something if you needed clarification on, on answers about the question or talk about a subject in the class uh, I'm there just like regular office hours so that's the only synchronous part, and that takes place in Eastern Standard Time. And all the due dates for the um, homeworks and papers are in Eastern Standard Time as well. So, okay. What is this class all about? The, class, the course description and the learning objectives. This class is really about different types of organizations and how people behave within organizations, primarily corporate organizations, but it could be organizations at school, uh, in the family. Um, it's just really talking about the environments that are generated when people get together and they start working. And sometimes these environments can be unpleasant and dysfunctional, and sometimes they can be very effective. So we're gonna discuss you know, what makes a person tick in an organized setting. And to help to understand these issues, um, they created this field called organizational behavior to really study and investigate how people behave, um, you know, with within these organizations. And we're going to be looking at, you know, your perception, your motivation, leadership, decision making, uh, teamwork, 
all these types of dynamics that we'll be with, you know, we'll be talking about within the course. Um, so we'll be we'll be going over, you know, a basic list of classic organizational behavior topics and principles. And we want to really, I want to really lead you to a knowledgeable position of self-awareness and confidence in this management area. Now, to help you with the learning goals, um, I've listed them out here, what we're trying to do in this class. And I want to help students understand organizational behavior issues and how to become more effective managers and more effective employees at work. I want to provide up-to-date, relevant uh, information about the field better prepare you for a work life after graduation. I want to engage you um, in the process through class discussion and class lectures and, uh, uh, about the topic. I want to expose you to different terminology and business acumen related to organizational behavior and improve your communication and interpersonal skills throughout the class. Um, and we're going to accomplish this through the textbook, the, the uh, papers and the mini quizzes that we're going to be uh, um, current articles that we're going to be using during this class. So class time is going to be broken up between watching my video lectures and participating on the discussion boards. And I know some of you may be tired of discussion boards, but I use them in a very effective and a very powerful way to help tie you back to the course and reinforce the material. Okay. Now the grading for the class is pretty simple. I have there are two papers, Organizational Culture and CEO Profile Report. Those are both 15 points. Uh, discussion boards are 20 points. And I have five quizzes of 10 points each, which are 100 points. This is how the points break down into grades. OK. Now, participation and preparation, basically, this is really um, counting on you to, to read the textbook and to watch the lectures to be prepared for the information that I'm, I'm giving you that you could help um, put into the class discussion boards and the discussion boards each week I'll post anywhere from two to four discuss class discussions uh, using the blackboard discussion board uh, menu tool um, and I expect each student to participate if students are unprepared or they do not post to the discussion board they will be losing points um, and I expect you to read and reply to other students in the class as well. The discussion boards will also be used for current events. I'm going to be asking you to find articles related to organizational behavior to post into the discussion board to develop a discussion of relevant uh, information and terms and facts um, that you're going to summarize and give me a brief idea what this article is about and why you, why you think it's important to post. Now there are two papers that we're going to be going over and this I'll talk about more in the assignments, but the, we have a cultural report profile paper and a CEO profile report. And again, I just listed out the, the schedule week one, two, and three here. Um, and the rest of this, let's see, ec no, you know, econo academic dishonesty. Please don't cheat in this course is what I'm basically saying. I'm, I, you know, it's an online course and I'm trusting you to be a model student while you're taking this course. Uh, here's a rubric for the paper, and this is the last part of the syllabus. So when you write the paper, I am looking for a professional graduate level written paper with citations, with proper reference list, and the whole, the whole nine yards. I'm looking for not something you just throw together real quick. I'm looking for something that is a well organized and written paper. So I developed this rubric to give you an idea of what I'm looking for. In these papers, I'm looking that you, you have a well organized and well presented paper with good formatting, um, even some good visuals, maybe some graphics in it as well, uh, that your research was outstanding, that I'm seeing that you're looking at various academic articles and, and other book references to enhance and make a well-developed paper. I'm looking for information that was cited properly using APA, uh, information that was not just in a paragraph, you know, a paraphrase form from the internet, but integrated well into your paper and properly cited with a reference list. I'm looking for your writing to be interesting and engaging. I don't want to be bored when I'm reading your paper. I want to think, you know, this is very, you know, a very good topic, very interest, very interestingly written. I want it to be grammatically correct. Um, the topics requested in the assignment are thoroughly covered in the paper, uh, and then you have an excellent, you know, made excellent use of space. You didn't put a lot of filler in or fluff. It's just a very clear and concise paper. So this is what I'm looking for when you write the paper. So I give you a very clear rubrics that I'll follow up with when I grade your first paper 
And, you know, I'm expecting a, um, a professional effort here, a graduate level effort. If I see an undergraduate level paper, I will be all over that with my feedback to you, looking for ways to help you improve your writing or calling you out on, you know, areas that you're weak in in developing that paper. Okay, so let's go over to assignments. Assignments are quite simple and straightforward for the course. We have the discussion board. Now, this is just saying it's an assignment. Don't click here to submit anything. You do that in the discussion menu over here. But in the discussion board here, it's going to be 20 points to your grade. And it's something that's the heart of the class. Like organizational behavior needs discussion. It's not just lecture alone. So my lectures in combination with this discussion board make up those 16 hours of class time a week. So I really expect you to get in here, read other students' posts, reply to them, create your own posts, and you're gonna earn points for participation for the quality of your answers and replies based on the questions that I post in the, in the discussion board. So the discussion board, more than any other class I teach, the discussion board here is the most valuable and the most important element of the class, I feel. And then we have your quizzes, your five quizzes are laid out. And like I said, they're all open and ready for you to work on. And they each close at a different date throughout the class. So you wanna make sure that you get a head start on these quizzes so you don't get caught you know, with a quiz being incomplete before the due date. And if a quiz, a quiz is not done or incomplete, there are no makeups. So don't even ask. So make sure you get this uh, done on time and start it early if you tend to have many issues that prevent you from doing your work sometimes, like a busy work life or family life, get these quizzes started early so you don't lose a lot of points here. Okay, now, okay, so those are the first two sections. The third sections of assignments are papers. There are two papers for this class. And the first paper is Organization Culture Report or Profile. And this is due on January 16th and it's 15 points. So I want you to select a company and the company you select for this paper should be different than the company you're going to select for the CEO profile report. And the company that you're going to select here hopefully will be a public company because public companies, there are a lot more information on, it's a lot easier to uh, gather research for and um, it, Financial information, every public companies are more open, give you more to work with. And what I'm looking for you to do is investigate the company and prepare a report on the, on, the, on the company's culture. And the paper should answer the following questions. What is the culture of the organization? How do you know that this is the culture? What are the signs? What are the evidence? What, co what caused the organization to create this culture? And what effects of the culture on what effects of the culture on the organization, the employees, and the society. So what are the effects of this culture as far as how people outside the company view the company and how people inside the company view the company? Um, and can the culture be changed? What suggestions would you have for improving this culture? Now, I'm looking for a paper that's between 2,100 and 2,700 words, which is about seven to 10 double-spaced pages. And I'd like you to attach it to this link. You just click on this link here and there'll be a um, browse my computer attach file and just attach the file here um, to, the, uh, to this assignment. I don't want you to, um, I don't want you to type it into a text box or anything like that. So don't click write submission, just attach the, uh, the paper to this class. You don't need to add any comments and then you can just submit. So as simple as that, and just make sure you do it before the due date. And if you go over the, the, the 2,700 words, that's okay. Just don't, just don't double it. Don't go over 5,000 words. But I can understand if you have extra to write. Um, it's not gonna, if you write more, and I'm not gonna penalize you, it's not gonna really hurt your paper. But if your paper needs to be longer and, and, and larger, I understand. And sometimes even appreciate it that you took the effort, extra effort. Now, the CEO report uh, should be based on a, a different company. And what we're looking for here is we're looking for a dynamic leader. So it doesn't have to be a CEO. It could be a president. It could be a CFO. Just a dynamic leader inside of a, a corporation. Now, now, for example, Steve Jobs. Please don't pick Steve Jobs because I already have 1,400 papers about Steve Jobs. So try to find somebody else. But I'll use him as an example since no one's going to be working with Steve Jobs. And... What we want is a dynamic person like Steve Jobs that has an effective leadership style that has a history of being successful in business. And you could write you know, a background of the CEO briefly. What's their history? How do they get where they are? What their leadership style is and their philosophy, their, their leadership values, their biggest strengths and weaknesses, um, 
even includes some of the biggest opportunities and threats in their world. Describe one quality that contributes to the leader's success and what do you learn most of what did you learn most about studying about this leader? And these are just six idea areas. You can include other areas in your paper as well. If you have other ideas or other content that you think would be relevant or interesting in the CEO report, please include it. And again, it's the same uh, size, 2,100 to 2,700 words. You can go over if you want. I want you to make sure your name is on these papers. Something we learned in first or second grade, put your name on the report at the top and please save it. I prefer PDF files. It could be a Word file as well. Uh, and again, just attach it to this link when you're done. And <clears throat> it's pretty straightforward. I think you would understand. Now, when you do the first paper, I will create some uh, a decent amount of feedback for you to help you to perform better in the second paper. So if you have any weaknesses in the first paper that are not uh, that are holding you back from getting the full points, I'm going to point them out and I'm going to give you a lot of constructive uh, feedback to help you improve and do better on the CEO report, your last paper, because I, I want you to do well in this class and I want to give you appropriate feedback to help you get there. Okay. Now, the last area of this class that we should talk about is discussions. So if we go into discussions, there you'll see that I have a lot of discussion boards set up here. And so I try to make them clear by each discussion board I label, I label week one. So we have uh, article one for week one. I have uh, discussion question for week one, self assignment, self assessment for week one. So those are the, th the three discussion board questions for week one. And then I have, I start week two. So I clearly label the discussion boards for each week, including adding um, the due dates as far as when this will be open. So think of these discussion boards as a weekly sort of assignment that you must complete each week. So I don't, I don't really want anybody to participate in the discussion boards on the weekend. So, you know, try to post your original response on Monday or Tuesday and your replies Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, if you can. Now, if you want to go ahead and post your original responses early, you can post them early. I just want to make sure that you're replying on a timely basis. So don't wait to the last day, the last hour to reply to people's, you know, feedback on people's posts. So, you know, in the discussion board article, if you click here, I wrote click here because it's not always obvious where you click. I posted the first sort of article here and what I did was I clicked on create thread. I created the thread. I put in uh, my student name and the brief title of the article and I posted my information below. And what you see is this th uh, thread here where when you post an article, I want the title, author, date, the source, a summary of the article, why you picked it, and how it's relevant to the class. So this way we have a source. If you know, I suggest that you know this article I posted here is about a four-day work week. So you should read the article and then um, click reply to me. Well, you don't have to actually do it to my article. This is just really a sample article. But feel free to reply if you want to create a discussion. You can also. I, I really would appreciate if you rate everyone's article in five stars this is completely anonymous no one will know and it's the average of the class it helps me to get a better understanding of how the class felt about the article or your or your write-up of the article and it helps aid me in, in grading your participation so be um accurate with these don't be overly generous be you know if someone really made a, a lousy post that doesn't add much to the class give them one star they'll never know um if they'd write something great and it's really uh, a benefit to the class, give them five stars. You know, so this is this is something that helps me to understand how relevant the discussion boards are being. So grading each other's posts are beneficial. So when you're ready, you just click on create thread, and you use your your, your you put your name in and a brief title of the article, like I said, and then you just follow this format that I've already created for the articles, and this will help tie the class together with a lot of additional outside information. The week two discussion question, I have a discussion question that's from the textbook on page seven, the research insight text box. And it's about um, women might make better leaders. So I want people's input. It's sort of a, a you know, it's sort of a, a hot topic here. And it, it's something that people will feel passionate about. And it's really great for class discussion. Now, rounding out the first week, I have a self-assessment. So this comes in the back of the textbook. I want you to complete self-assessment three, four, and five. And it can be found on W33 and W53 at the back of the book. 
and I want you to, I expect you to complete the assignments from the textbook and draft a response discussion of the results. And I also posted a, an example of this here. So if you click on this link, takes a second okay and then I put again you put your first name I'm just using Jane Doe and John Doe as an examples and you know a brief example of what you know the titles are and here I have the global the turbulence tolerance test global readiness and personal value so these are just a summary of those three exercises that I wrote up here and and this is not me personally this is just a student example I pulled from another course um, and then when you're ready to contribute, you create, create, create thread, and then you'll see a whole list of threads here from each student that you want to go in and, and read and see what they thought about these, these self-assessments. Uh, it's a very interesting, um, trying to make you more self-aware about your actions and behavior at work. And then we move into week two. And week two, again, discussion question, article, second discussion question, and a self-assignment. So week two, we have four discussion boards. Think, you know, think of one discussion board a day, sort of. Just like in, in class, we'd have one discussion every class. So I'm really trying my best to make these discussion boards relevant, interesting, engaging, but I can't do it without, without your enthusiasm and your help. So I need you to be enthusiastic, supportive, and helpful when you contribute to these discussion boards. And really, this has, in the past, has been a very successful group of discussion board questions. And again, since this is organizational behavior and discussion is a real strong um, content area of this course, there are more discussion boards here than any other class I teach. And I find that they're, they're very important and I really get disappointed when someone shirks their discussion board responsibilities, posts very small original posts to each discussion board and very ungenerous like when they're in their replies. And remember that I do, I do want to see uh, when you reply to a student, it's a significant reply. Your first two replies at least should be 100 to 200 words. The replies after that can be shorter as long as you meet your first two replies that are fully developed. Then you feel free to make shorter replies as long as they're, the first two are substantial. Uh, just to keep engaged and encourage other, other students to work. And if you see a posting that's really missing something, say so. And, you know, tell them, like, I, I read your post, but I really felt like I wanted to see more here, hear more from here. What do you think about this? So we're trying to make these engaging and interesting and a fun part of the class. So have a good attitude when you do these discussion boards. Look forward to them. They're really a key part of the class. Now, if you're new to discussion boards and you haven't used them before, I think I'm going to post an additional video that's just all about discussion boards that you can watch if you're a little if you're still not sure how these discussion boards work I'll have a separate video from that that I had recorded in the previous class that you can watch and, and it will be I'm gonna host everything in uh, YouTube so on the announcements here you'll see that I have um, when you click on the video syllabus it will be within a playlist so you should subscribe to the YouTube channel and subscribe to the playlist so you can see how all the videos are organized for this course. Okay, so that is my basic overview for the class. So we've, we reviewed the syllabus, the class overview for the first three weeks, the assignments and the discussion boards, and you're all ready now to start the course. So I think the first call to action is after you watch this video is to go and procure the textbook and then start reading the textbook and maybe even attempt some of the quizzes before we start the class. Not a requirement. I'm just saying if you have some free time over the winter, over the holiday break, you can begin the class early. And then that way when we get into January, you'll already be able to move through the class pretty fast. Okay. I, I wish you a great experience and I hope, I hope that this video has been instructional and informative and helps you get started with this course. Thank you.